Okay, guys. So, good morning, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. So, welcome to our first laboratory discussion in clinical parasitology. So, for this time, sa discussion natin today, so I want you to have an overview of your clinical parasitology section. What are you going to expect sa semester natin? The different Terminology is important to our core course, so I won't discuss it one by one. But as we go on, yeah, I will explain the different terminologies that are commonly used in parasitology, so that we will be speaking the same language. So, pag sinabi kong trophozoite, you know what I'm saying. If I say cyst, you are you know what I'm saying when I'm saying helminths, when I'm saying protozoa. Hopefully, as malaman yon ngayong discussion natin. And the equipments, yeah, and a little bit of the equipments, and our and the pinnacle of our discussion is specimen collection and preservation. Yeah. So, class, of course, in the parasitology section, the main specimen we encounter is stool specimen, class. So, I have a love-hate relationship with parasitology because the parasites are exciting. You don't know. What you're going to find, but however, the specimen, guys, it kumakapit sa katawan niyan. So um here um usually the parasitology section is small niyan. So here this lady is um using a biosafety cabinet. Actually, that's not required in the parasitology section unless class um may extra budget yung laboratory. Then they're using a bio safety cabinet but nevertheless um other than that usually we don't use biosafety cabinet yeah so class um on a typical day yeah and, um once you focus the stool under the microscope you could see this yeah and so here um under the microscope so you will place a little bit of stool a little bit of saline then cover it with a cover slip and focus it under low power objective and high power objective yan lang makikita nyo class fecal debris actually you could see artifacts yan so some yung mga fibers na fibers from the digested food materials and so our goal is to find is to find the um, suspected parasite. Yan. So usually, kanya lang makikita mo sa, sa under the microscope on a normal day. But on an exciting day, class, yan, you could see um, helminth eggs yan, or ova. So helminth eggs or ova. Yan. So pwede makakita ng amoeba or protozoa, pero helminth eggs muna tayo. So, let's just have an overview. Yan, mag-identify, identify muna tayo ng konti. So, guys, yan, that's your Hymenolepis diminuta. So, almost all of this are soil-transmitted helminth gases. So, you could, once, if um, people are working, working in, with soil, example, yung mga farmers natin, children who are playing outside, and they are not washing their hands, yan, you could have soil-transmitted helminth gases. So, Yung soil nyo, yun, napunta sa mga fingers nyo, and you will eat without washing your hands. So, yun, you can have soil-transmitted helminth. As example, we have Hymenolepis diminuta ova. Yan, meron tayong Tricuris, Tricuria, ova. So, ang key characteristic niya is may dalawang knob sa gilid. So, mga Tricuris, Tricuria itong mga to. Yeah, and these are very common in the Philippines. We have your hookworm ova. Yan. Ito, hookworm ova rin yan. We have your fertilized Ascaris lumbricoides. Yan. So, once the, once the, this mammulated layer becomes more rough, yan, rough, for, nagiging fertilized siya. So, this one, this ova, so it's starting to be fertilized. Yan. So, far smooth ba lang siya eh. So, eventually, it will be rough. So, it will be fertilized. So, pag na-fertilized na ang Ascaris lumbicroid, this ova class, it can be infective. It, it can infect humans already. Yan. So, we have Clonorchis sinensis. Yan, this small boy right here. And actually, we have Trichostrongyloid. 
Trichostrongylus ova. Hindi ko nilagay kasi I'm not really that sure. Kasi ang raming kamukha nitong ovang to eh. So, I didn't I didn't place it yet. So, yan class. Just an overview. Ayan, at least may ma-identify na yung konti ha. So, this is your hookworm ova. Yan. So, ang rami kasing um, species under hookworm ova. So, pwedeng Ancelostoma duodenale, Nicator americano under hookworm. Marami kasing hookworm species, guys. So, ayan. So, those are just a few examples of ova that you could find uh, under the microscope. So, ganun na ganun yung mga itsura nila, class. So, so, basically, in this section, we are learning about parasites. So, parasites are organisms that live on and obtain their nutrients from another organism. So basically, class, parasite sucks the life out of a host. Yan. So, may makakalala ba kayong parasites, guys? Yan. Joke lang, joke lang. Okay. So, class, we have three types of parasites. So, dito iikot yung ano natin, discussion natin actually for the whole semester. So, after we have finished all the laboratory procedures, Yan, sa lecture nyo, discuss yung lahat ng mga ginagawa sa laboratory. Now, we will head on getting to know all the different parasites. And here, you need to start memorizing already. Yan. So, class, there are three main parasites. Yan, three main types of parasites. We have helminths, yan, protozoa, and ectoparasites. So, class, helminths are multicellular parasites. Multicellular, meaning they have two, two, two or more cells inside of it. So, usually, helminths are bigger. So, multicellular parasites. Yan, mga uod. Pwede maging uod. Yan. You can see them macroscopically, my, my, macroscopically sometimes. You can see it by the naked eye. Yan. Kasi multicellular example, Ascaris. Diba? Mukhang pasta yung mga Ascaris. Next, we have protozoa. Your protozoa class are your unicellular parasite. Yan. So, they are only one cell. Yan. Mga amoeba, kumbaga. So, there we have different parasites yan, under your protozoa. And we have your ectoparasite. ectoparasite. So, class, ecto means on the surface. On the surface. So, usually, class, these are the parasites that only thrive on the surface of the skin. Example, ticks, fleas, lice, mites, louse, lice, whatever, crabs, yan, body crabs, pubic lice, ganyan, or arthropods. Yan. So, yung mga under the, yung nasa skin nyo lang. So, these are ectoparasites. Yan. Arthropods, aka. So, nangitindihan ba, class? Isa pa. So, helminths are multicellular parasites. Protozoa are single cellular parasites. Therefore, protozoa can only be seen by using the microscope and ectoparasites class. Yung mga ticks, please. Yan. Pwede natin makita with your naked eye. Yan. So, class. So, under helminths, we have basically four families under it. So, we have nematodes or also called as your roundworms, your filaria. So, nagbigay ako ng video. I hope that you're going to watch it. Um, these are round, usually class nematodes. They are found in your gastrointestinal tract. In your filaria class, these are roundworms, yan, usually cylindrical, which are found in your tissue. Yan. Kaya yung class filariasis, elephantiasis, yung lumalaki, lumulobo yung mga extremities nila. We have cestodes or cestoda um, classes. So under this are tapeworms. Yan. So they are flat. Yan. Tape nga eh. They are flat. Tapeworms and actually they are separated into sections. Trematoda are also flatworms. Yan. Actually, cestoda and trematoda are under your plat platyhelminthes. Yan. So, magkapareho yung family nila. So, cestoda at saka trematoda, flat lat sila. However, yung cestoda class, they are tapeworms and they are separated into sections. Mamaya papakita ko. Trematoda, flat rin sila. Yan. Pero hindi sila separated into section. They are flukes. 
next class, protozoa. So we have sarcomastigophora. Ito na yung mga amoeba and flagellates. So isn't it that you, you learn already about flagella in your microbiology? Isn't it when we say flagella, um, these are whip-like extension, whip-like extension, whip, di ba? So parang may tail. So ganun rin sa mga protozoa class, yung iba may tail. Example is um, um, Trichomonas vaginalis. Next is ciliophora. So instead of flagella, they have cilia. Yan. Example is balantidium cola. Mamaya, I have a photo of that. Next is, we have a complexa. Examples are sporozoa. Ang pinakasikat na sporozoa class are mga plasmodium yung nagkakos ng malaria. And we have blastocystida. So the um, ano na yun? Blas Mamaya, wish ko ng sample lang. Blastocystida. So, and ectoparasite class are arthropods. Ayan. So, class, um, ayun, yung mga nematodes nyo, roundworms, example, mga ascaris, yan, you can see it in your naked eye. We have Trichuris dicura, Interobius vermicularis. So, class, yung Interobius vermicularis, um, this, the other name of Interobius vermicularis are sitworm, S-E-A-T, worm. Sit worm or pin worm. Yan. So, usually, class, um, the female, the female enterobius vermicularis, the gravid female, yung mga nganak na, na female na enterobius vermicularis, during, at night, they migrate in the perianal, um, perianal area. So, dun sa anal area natin, class, or nung may enterobius vermicularis, dun nagmamigrate at dun naglilay ng egg ang enterobius vermicularis. So, class, kaya tinawag na sitworm or pinworm ang, ang enterobius vermicularis because once, example, once a child, yan, hindi nagpapanti, hindi nagbibrief, tapos umupo sa isang upuan. Yan. So, yung egg ng Enterobius vermicularis, it is in the perianal area. Nasa may butthole class. So, so ayun. So, pag umupo yung bata doon, tapos may ibang umupo na hindi rin nakapanti or brief, nasa kanya na yung egg. Ganyan. So, yun. Enterobius or sitworm or pinworm. Kaya yun, yung iba, makakati yung mga puwet. So, yung butthole. So, that's perhaps your enterobius vermicularis. We have your ancelastoma and necator. So, those are hookworm. Yan. So, class, according to WHO, yan. So, nematodes are usually um, soil transmitted helminth causes soil transmitted helminthiasis or they are transmitted via fecal oral transmission. So, pag naka fecal oral transmission, if you have eaten food or drank water that is contaminated with stool, yan, fecal oral transmission. So, class, um, WHO um, had this term, sabi niya, unholy trinity. Unholy trinity. So, trinity tatlo. So, some, some, some people are in are In, once a person is infected with ascaris, most probably they can have trichuris and hookworm. Kasi nasa isang soil lang naman itong mga to eh. So, WHO has labeled um, ascaris lumbricoides, trichuris trichura, and hookworm species as the unholy trinity. Yan. Kasi usually pag meron ka ng isa, meron ka na rin ng dalawa. Yan. So, people who are working in agriculture, Kids, yan, school children are usually at risk of soil <laughs> of soil transmitted helminthiasis. Next class, number two, your filaria or your yan, filaria or your tissue roundworms. Yan. So I hope you're going to watch the documentary I gave. Yan. So it's an eyewitness. So So, the video is about the abaca workers. So, abaca is usually um, is usually the main component or it is used 
in making money. Yan. However, class, the abaca farmers are at the risk of being beaten by a mosquito which carries Wuchereria bancrofti, Brugia malayi, ganyan. So, nagkakarry nito ng mga filarial worms at pag nakagat sila, it can cause lymphadenitis or the swollen lymph nodes, ganyan. So, yun, lumalaki yung mga extremities nila, yung mga leg nila, yung mga scrotum nila, scrotum, testicles, yung mga breast, ganyan. So, yun. So, filaria. Yan, pag, pag narinig nyo na yung mga Wuchereria, Bancrofti, Brugia, Malagi, Loa, Loa, Oncocerca, Volvolus, yan, Filaria, mga yan. And usually, they stayed around the tissue area. Yan, tissue. So, mga nematodes class usually in the gastrointestinal tract. Yan. We have cestoda. So, yung mga cestodes natin are tapeworms, like I said, and they're separated into different sections. And the section, we call them proglotid. Yan, proglotid. Yan. So, usually class, Um, yan, yung body nila ang tawag dyan, proglotid. Yung, sa, yung head nila class, it's the scolex. So class, the challenge with your cestodes class, it could get really long. Yan, pwedeng sobrang haba. And usually what we could only find in the stool are proglotids. So if you could already see proglotids in the stool, most probably tapeworm ang nagkakos ng sakit. So, yun, the challenge with um, tapeworms, yun, they could get really long. And unless you will kill or you will find the scolex, the head, um, in the stool, that's the only time you know that the patient is cured. So, ganun, pag nahanap na natin yung scolex. Pero kung proglotid lang ng proglotid ang nakukuha natin sa, sa stool exam natin at hindi natin makuha yung ano, scolex, yung ano, ulo ng cestode, ibig sabihin, it's still there. So, yun yung mahirap sa tapeworms class. Ayan, so, pwedeng tenia solium, tenia sazenata. So, this tenia solium is beef, ay, pork tapeworm. Tenia sazenata is beef tapeworm. So, class, yun, sinasabi ko to sa mga students ko that when you are not cooking your beef samgipsal properly, if you're not cooking your pork samgipsal properly, you could have tapeworms. Yeah. Next class, we have trematodes. So, trematodes are also flat. Flat sila, platyhelminte sila. Pareho sila ng tapeworm. However, they do not have proglotids or sections. Yeah. So, we have schistosoma, itong mga schistosoma itong mga to, japonicum hematobium. So usually to find schistosoma hematobium, the, the, ure, the specimen is urine. Yan. It's called hematobium class because one of its symptoms is hematuria. So there's blood in your urine and we have your fasciola hepatica, fasciola gigantica. So flat sila. Pero malalaki lang. So, usually, yung mga size nito, mga 1 cm, itong mga fasciola gigantica, um, macroscopically. Ayun. So, class, wag kakalimutan ng mga helmet. So, dyan, iikot siguro ang second grading natin. Ayan. Or, I think, first grading, matatouch natin to. Next class, we have your protozoa. So, your sarcomasticophora, yung mga amoeba. May picture ba ako dito? Ayan. So, this... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So guys, first image class. This is your entamoeba histolytica. So this is the causative agent for your amoebiasis. So this is in the cyst form. In the cyst form. And later I'll show you the um the trophozoid form. So, your protozoa class have different morphological forms. So, yung napakita ko, cyst. So, class, we also have flagellates. Yan. So, ito, class, this is your trichomonas vaginalis. So, um, yes, so from the word, yeah, it can be found in your vagina. It, the specimen that we could use is urine. Actually, class, trichomonas vaginalis is a sexually transmitted disease. Yan. So, This is a parasite which is sexually transmitted. So it could be passed from women, women to men, men to men. But usually, it's more symptomatic among women kaysa 
women na ano na kikita. Tapos class um ayun so if the married couple has trichomonas vaginalis, both of them should be treated. Yan. Kasi nga, ano yun eh, meron ng ping-pong disease. So, kung nat- isa lang yung tinarit mo, wala, pagpapasapasaan nila. Kasi it's a sexually transmitted disease. Ayan. So, class, you know, that could be, example, you're in a married relationship. Yan. And apparently, someone. Yan. So, wala naman kayong trichomonas vaginalis. But apparently, biglang may nagkaroon ng trichomonas vaginalis. Yan. So, that could be a sign of infidelity. At, yan, meron na kaming pasyente yung ganun. Nagulat siya. Bakit married siya? Tapos, bigla siyang nagkaroon ng trichomonas vaginalis. Yan, chika. So, next is, we have um, hemoflagellates. Yan. So, ayan na yung mga ano. Ayan. Ayan yung mga flagella, ba? Diba? Yung mga protrusion. Ganda. So, these are blood flagellates. Yan. So, si Les- Leshmania Donovani. What else? We have trypanosoma cruzi. Hemoflagellates. So, flagellates that are found in the blood. So, therefore, blood. Pag Leshmania... Ayan, trypanosoma, class, blood ang specimen. Pag trichomonas vaginalis, urine. Ayan. And tamiba histolytica, class, stool. Ayan. So, ciliophora, hindi ko nabura to. Venus has a beautiful name, but it's hot. Okay, so, yan, we have balantidium coli. Saan yung cilia? Ito po, ayan. So, hindi ko makalimutan itong balantidium coli class, you know. Ewan ko, parang siyang Pokemon for me. I don't know why. We have Apicomplexa. So, under it, R. Sporozoa. So, ang pamilyang Plasmodium. Yan. So, class, um, it, ano, the disease that it causes is malaria, the Plasmodium. So, we have Falciparum, Vivax. So, Falciparum and Vivax are the common species that are found in the Philippines. But we also have malaria, ovale, and no lessi. Huwag niyong kakalimutan. So class, your plasmodium loves your blood. So it goes directly to your blood. And apparently, doon sila, there are stages of, um, of, of the plasmodium in the blood. So pwede siyang maging ring form, trovozoid, schizon 2, gametocyte. So, ang key characteristic ng falciparum, pag in-infect niya ang, ang red blood cell and in the gam- gametocyte form, parang ban- nagiging banana shape yung red blood cell. So, class, this is a this is ano, bad news for the patient because um, it's it's affecting your red blood cells. Diba? Red blood cells are important carriers of your oxygen. So, what if they infect? loads of your, many of your red blood cells. Yeah. That's why many um, many patients who are affected with malaria have anemia. Ganyan. And class, usually, um, since, ano, minsan nga hindi napapansin itong mga ring form na to, yan, especially if the microscopies is not experienced. So, meron na akong narinig na isang malarial patient tinrit na ng cancer ganun kasi they don't know what's wrong with them Bak- with with that person kasi laging mababa ang red blood cell nila malaman yung cause malaria pala ang cause so malaria class na diagnose siya through travel history so class dapat um as the clinician they should also make a good um travel history um um good history taking ganyan good medical examination kasi maraming parasitic infection ang nahuhuli kung alam mo kung saan sila galing because there are many places wherein malaria is endemic still yan so yan no class yan ang interesting di ba i memorize niyo syempre yan but not now yan pero yan just an overview na ano, meron tayong different species of your plasmodium. Meron na ring different stages. Yan. So, actually, yung tinitrain naman ng mga medical technologies pa, ano, magbasa ng malaria smear. But as of now, since bachelor, ano pa lang naman tayo, yan, just, ano, just given, at least alam nyo lang. Yan. And we have, yan, sa blastocystida, we have blastocystis hominis. Yan. So, this is very common usually in um in your stool 
So, I know, actually, blastocystis hominis do not have clinical significance. Pwede mo ganito siya. Yan, paminsan-minsan nakikita ko itong mga blastocystis hominis. Yan, wala naman silang clinical significance actually. So, what are we going to study about the parasites? So, ganito yung flow natin kung sisimula na natin sa neto, nematoda. We will know their general characteristics. What's their life cycle? So, how what's the baby stage or the young stage? What's the teenager stage? What's the adult stage? Ganyan yung life cycle. So, ano yung mga, saan siya mga, ano yung mga host na pinupuntahan niya? Later, let's elaborate on that. We have the morphology. So, what's the shape? The size? Yan. Actually, mahalaga rin ang size. How do we usually diagnose it? Yan. What's the treatment? What's the clinical significance? What are diseases that it causes? And what is the epidemiology and distribution? Yan. I told you a while ago that once you know a person kung saan siya galing, kung ano yung mga pinuntahan niyang places, actually this can be clues in diagnosing ano, what type of parasite um, it is. Yan. So usually class parasites are very common among tropical countries, subtropics, um, developing countries. Ayan, class. So, class, your life cycle. Ayan, ito. Sample. Life cycle of a frog, di ba? Una, naging egg, tapos tadpole, tadpole with legs, ayan, young frog and adult frog. Class, same thing with parasites. Ayan. So, masanay na kayo na makakita ng mga ganitong images. And I'll help you on how you could um, dissect. Ano ba yung mga, eh, paano ba natin basahin yung mga ganitong images? So, your life cycle is very important so we could know how the disease is transmitted. How is it, how does it infect the person? Direct contact, sexually transmitted ba? Fecal oral, yan. Through the nasal passages, kagat ng lamok, yan. Vector board. And what else? we could know the infective stage. Yan. So, what is the morphologic form that invades the human? So, class, um, pag ikaw, yan, wag naman sana, nakaka, naka, nakakain ka ng, ano, ng unfertilized egg ng ascaris. Yan. That's not the infective stage. So, hindi ka, ma, hindi ka makakain Di mo may, hindi ka may infect ng ascaris yan. If it's not the infective stage, you will not be infected. But class, if you will eat, yeah, apparently accidentally eat an embryo, embryonated egg or a fertilized egg already, then that's the time that you will only be infected by ascaris lumbricoides because that's the infective stage. Yan. So, yeah, next class, diagnostic stage. This is the morphologic form that is detected via retrieval method. So, usually, class, Ascaris lumbricoides, we could get it in your stool. And usually, in stool, yan, pag sa feces niya, yan, usually, ang nakukuha natin, fertilized egg and unfertilized egg. Ma'am, saan yung adults? Yan. Saan yung, saan yung adults? Yan. So adults it could only be that it could only be pwede tayong makahanap ng ano ng adults only if you operated on the person or sa sobrang rami na nung adults lumabas na sa ilong sa denga but usually class pag hindi niyo masyadong malalayong infection usually nag ang diagnostic stage lang na nahanap natin is fertilized and unfertilized egg usually we cannot find adults yan so, because, class, and what else? We could find where is the main habitat in the human body. So, example, sa Ascaris lumbricoides, ang favorite place niya, class, is in the small intestine, in the gastrointestinal tract. Ayan. Yun yung habitat niya talaga. Example, kanina pa, yung Trichomonas vaginalis. Is it in the ano, small intestine ang bahay ng Trichomonas vaginalis? No, di ba? It's in the reproductive system or in the genito-urinary tract. Ayan. So, ganoon, class. So, marami tayong um, Marami tayong information na pwedeng makuha sa life cycle. Kaya only on thing taste is lang. 
Okay? So, simulan natin ang kwento ng Ascaris Lumbricoides. So, let's start with number one. Yan. So, it starts with a um, adult female and an adult male. Yan. So, usually class, the female parasites are the one who, which, who is bigger. Yan. So, in nature, mas malaki ang mga babaeng parasites kaysa mga lalaki. Yan. So, they, their habitat is in the small intestine. Yan. So, eventually, they will reproduce class and the eggs that will be formed will be released into the feces. And kung itong human na to class, there's no pra proper sanitation. So, class, ang rang pa areas around the world, especially among developing countries, na walang toilet. Yan. Sa soil pa rin sila nagda-defecate. So, that's the sad truth. So, actually, Ascaris lumbricoides, we could prevent it, eh, prevent this if there is only proper sanitation. Class, could we pause and appreciate Ayan, what we're learning in parasitology. So, some people do not have proper sanitation. Class, human rights sana ang toilet, pero hindi lahat may toilet. Ayan. So, what do they do? They defecate uh, under, on, ano, ground, on the ground. <coughs> ayan, sa mga butas, sa soil, <laughs> whatever. So, ayan, class, and they in, in their feces magkakaroon ng fertilized egg and <coughs> unfertilized egg so yung mga fertilized egg class so eventually they will turn they will develop into an embryonated egg sabi niya unfertilized egg will not undergo further development so class ikaw kung naka-intake ka ng na unfertilized egg hindi ka magkakaroon ng ascaris so unless it's fertilized and in, it's embryonated so that is the infective stage so may mga symbols naman itong infective stage itong diagnostic stage so once a person did not wash their hands, tapos na in, may soil sa kinain nilang lettuce, tapos merong embryonated egg, yun na, malulunok na ni pasyente. Yan. And number five, so the heart, hatch larvae will enter and circulate and migrate to the lungs. Yan. So sometimes there could be coughing. Larvae are coughed up and swallowed, re-entering the gastrointestinal tract. Maturation proceeds in the small intestine. Yan. So, makulit kasi ang mga larvae. Eh. So, it could be coughed up and swallowed. <laughs> Ew. And yun, it will go to the small intestine and back to the cycle again. So, class, actually, this is an easy life cycle. Yan. So, your life cycles can become as complicated as this. Example is dipelidium caninum. So, dipelidium caninum class. So, the, there is a parasite there is a parasite that is found in your fleece. Yan, yung fleece. So, class, ang definitive host, kung saan talaga nahanap itong dipelidium caninum, class, ay fleece. Yan. So, itong fleece na to, so they are carried by your dogs. And this fleece, so, kunyari, ang love na love mo talaga yung dog mo, ang lapit-lapit mo, tapos naka-ingest ka ng flea, Yan. So, that could enter your um, circulation. Tapos, magkakaroon ka ng dipyridium caninum. So, this is a cestode. So, tapeworm siya. Yan. Ito yung scolex. So, yun. Haba-haba. So, the habitat is in the small intestine. Ayan. So, class, yun. Proglotid ang nakikita natin. Proglotid lang. Kasi nga, yung tape yung sections ng body ng tapeworm yun lang yung yun yung nakikita natin that is the diagnostic stage yan the infective stage is ito pre larvae mature into ano which one cysticercoid ang infective stage yan so class yan ito yung pinili ko ang example because actually we had the patient who ingested fleas yan Ang masaklap class baby yung pasyente namin. Yun. So, iyak daw ng iyak yung baby, hindi makatulog. Tapos yung mami, napapansin niya, parang may puti-puti sa ano sa stool na may gumagalaw. Ganun. So, baka yung ano na yun, yung tapeworm na yun. Ayun, class. Dahil sa ano, ayun, may flea yung aso nila. 
na may sister sarcoid ng dipelidium caninum. Ayun. So, yun. Ang hirap, hirap na hirap sa lang i-diagnose. Dipelidium caninum pala. So, as complicated as this. So, yung meron tayong in, definitive host natin ito. So, ang human are only accidental host. So, definitive host yung talagang carrier nung, nung, ano, nung parasite. So, here, class, ano na ba to? Schistosoma ba to? Yan. So, it could be as complicated as this. Yan. So, schistosoma ba to? Not sure. Yan. Anyway, so, yan, class, eventually, we're going to discuss this one. So class, so what are the factors which influence diagnostic performance? So as far as possible, we want to do our best by in diagnosing this um, parasitic Are we recording? Okay. Okay, first one is the use of standard precaution. So obsolete na so your your universal precautions are already replaced with your standard precautions. So yun, treat all always all all specimens, even if it's blood, which blood or whatever specimen is that as potentially infectious and should be handled accordingly. And what else? So of course, if you have good quality microscope, good quality equipment, yan, is mas you know, smooth yung flow ng um, di diagnostic performance natin. So we need microscope, centrifuge, fume hood, and biological safety cabinet are actually not required in your parasitology laboratory. So fume hood. It's important in reducing the risk of exposure from fumes, um, of fumes from chemicals. So if you're preparing chemicals, you're using chemicals just like formalin in parasitology. If you're preparing your stains, stains like tri trichome stains, stains, ganon. So ayon class, you could use fume hood. Um, according to Garcia et al. 2017, um, some laboratories they utilize fume hood to reduce the odor of when opening the the stool containers. What else, class? Biological safety cabinet. Again, this is not required in your parasitology section. Nevertheless, yan kung may extra budget ng laboratory, they could use biological safety cabinet. Yan. if you're if you're handling um. Biological specimen, you could always use A, B, S, C, speci specifically class 2. What else? Refrigerator, freezer. As much as possible, we use fresh um, specimen in, um, fresh, fresh tool specimen in your um, fecalysis. Pero if you cannot, I know, only fresh, then refrigerated. And other supplies. What supplies? Example, air slides. Um, cover slips, glass pipettes, test tubes, yan, and the like. So, class, um, ma kailangan rin, di ba? Laboratory technical capabilities, training, and experience. And sorry, na ho, we're online. But, you know, hopefully, ano, hopefully one day, you could, we could enter again a laboratory. And number four, Recognition of artifacts versus parasites. Yeah. So artifacts are different um, different materials in the stool that resembles a parasite. Example are your um, mga fiber, ng food, pwedeng wag mukhang parasite, kung ano-ano pa. And class, uh, one, so to help us out, we could also use a ocular micrometer. So this one, this ocular micrometer, you can place it, this in your microscope and your ocular micrometer will show a, a graduation. Yan, tama ba ako? Graduation man tawag dito. So yun, magka, 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 papakita ng graduation so that you could measure the different ova, that you could see the different um, helminths or protozoa that you could see and this could serve as a guide. Yan. 
this this could serve a guide kung ano kung anong parasite yun kasi we could identify a parasite by its size yeah. so what else the importance of personal knowledge of parasite life cycle yan yeah. so sometimes yung life cycles could be really com- complex but it's very important in diagnosing class so a broad knowledge on your life cycle is very important because it will show how parasite infections are acquired new mode of transmission the predilection site where the parasites are found so class if you know the life cycle then you know where its habitat you know the best specimen to use so if you want to find trichomonas vaginalis of course you're not going to use stool specimen diba if you want to find leishmania or trypanosoma dapat blood specimen Third is how a parasite reaches its final destination. So, um, how could what is its diagnostic stage? And the possible extension migration to the patient can cause other symptoms. So, class example, your ascaris. Yeah, it could migrate in our in your lungs, your amoeba. It could migrate in your liver. Yeah, and so pag alam mo yung life cycle, alam mo kung saan pupunta yung parasite. Next, how the parasite leave its definitive host to return to the environment. So sometimes class, tayong mga humans, we are only accidental hosts. Yeah, hindi tayo hindi sinasadyang napunta sa atin yung parasite. Yeah, so example yung Dipylidium caninum, sa fleas naman talaga siya. Pero yun, since we are close to animals, yun, napupunta, na, na-infectionan tayo ng dipyridium kanainom. And class, some parasite has two life cycle stages. Or we could, there are two life cycle stages, the infective stage and the diagnostic stage. So, it's important that there is great good communication between clinicians and laboratory staff. We should work as a team with them para mas madaling nating ma-diagnose ang pasyente natin. And number seven, we have training clinicians regarding the diagnosis of gastrointestinal Intestinal tract parasitic infection that, you know, yun, the clinician should be, since, since meron ng peace affair, travel has been, traveling has been easier um, pre-pandemic, yan. So, mas, ano, mas prone na ang mga tao sa mga different parasitic infection. So, yun, I told you that um, a knowledge on the distribution of the parasite could be a great clue in diagnosing our parasitic infections. Yan. We can now start with our routine stool specimen pa, spe, stool specimen parasite examination methods. Okay. Yan. So first is test selection. So the common, the most common test that will be performed in parasito, parasitology is routine stool examination or routine fecalysis. Um, in, bo, in the books, they call it routine OVA and parasite examination o and p yung tawag nila so here so we detect organism in clinical specimen by using the macroscopic and microscopic characteristics yan however class sometimes we can may, may or may not recover the parasite yan syempre may limit lang siya because since we're using little amount of specimen, example, 2 to 5 grams lang ng stool, pwede hindi tayo makarecover ng parasite doon. And sometimes additional staining and immunoassays are involved. Yan. So however, class, pwede namang hindi fecalysis ang para sa pasyente. Depending on the clinical assessment. Yan. Kung malaria naman pala, eh di blood, di ba? So ganun. kung gastro so if the per, the patient is suffering gastrointestinal um, symptoms edi ano tayo routine ano fecalysis yeah. so your fecalysis not cannot can on, not only detect the presence of parasites it could only also detect GIT bleeding yan pwede tayong makita ng red blood cells sa um sa microscope pero pwede rin tayo makakita rin ng um, we can detect occult blood by uh, biochemical test occult blood means hidden blood yan blood that's not seen by the naked eye so we can use um occult blood testing next it could be used as a medical and surgical diagnosis 
We could detect steatorrhea. So we could detect fats under the microscope and evidence of malfunction of some parts of the GID liver and pancreas. So, ma mabilis na lang to class. Specimen <laughs> collection, processing, and shipping. So what are the specimen that we use? Okay, so guys, let's continue. So what are the specimen used in the clinical parasitology section? So the most common one are stools. Your stools are very important in um, detecting protozoa. So your protozoa, we can find cysts and trophozoites. Now, class trophozoites. So what else we could find? Helminth eggs, the larva, the adult worm. Proglotids and your cestodes. Yan. What else? Glass. We could also have tissue aspirates. So these are hindi na to mga common. Ha? So we can get aspirates from your liver, liver, the wadenum, um, bronco um, alveolar lavage. We have your blood specimen where we can find your sporozoas, your plasmodium, leishmania, trypanosoma. We have your urine, trichomonas vaginalis, kistosoma, hematobium, huwag niyong kakalimutan yan. We also have sputum, huwag niyong kakalimutan yan ito, para gawin mo sa western money sa sputum yan. And pag muscle biopsy, we have trichinella spiralis yan. Yung trichinella spiralis, the larva wants to stay between your muscle tissue. So class, what else? We have your cerebrospinal fluid. So this is the site where um, yung akantamiba natin. So ang gusto niyang puntahan is your nervous system. Yan. So your akantamiba, so when you're sm swimming in pools, ganyan, and you are immunocompromised. Yan. May, mahina yung immune system mo. Yan. Pwede pumasok yung akantamiba sa'yo. We have your RFS swab. So when we say orifice, these are openings yan, of the body. So example is the vagina and the perianal and the perianal. So yung vaginal swab, we could get trichomonas vaginalis. Your perianal swab, we have enterobius vermicularis and tamia. So we're going to focus um, enterobius vermicularis. So I told you a while ago that so when you have um, Gravid female, yung usually yung mas malaki. So, at night, at night, so if it's pregnant, yan, at night, it will migrate yan, in the perianal area. Tapos, it is where it will lay its eggs. Yan. So, kung ang bata, yan, kinakamot niya, yung perianal area niya, yung butthole niya, tapos, Kinain na naman niya. Ayan, that's your auto-infection. <laughs> Pwede kang mga auto-infection dyan. So, yan. So, paano kumuha ng perianal swab class? So, through scotch tape method. So, you could get a... <laughs> Hi! You could get this um, tongue depressor. Tapos, kabitan mo ng scotch tape. Tapos, idikit mo dun sa perianal area and hoping that you could get some... Um, enterobius vermicularis eggs. Yan. So, ganito yung itsura ng enterobius vermicularis ova. So, ano, parang it's a D-shape. Yan. Flat yung ano niya. D-shape tapos may fold. So, that's the larva inside it. Yan. So, merong perianal itching. So, class, when a person has ano, enterobius vermicularis tapos they're sleeping naked and they're um, and some of the eggs um, are in the bed sheet. Tapos papagpagin nila. Tapos pupunta sa kapitbahay. Tapos ma nagchichismis yung kapitbahay. Pwedeng maisubo. Hi. And ganun. ganun. <laughs> anyway. So let's proceed. So um, it's best yan, to get the best out of our routines, tool examination, our fecalysis. We need to prepare our patient. Yan. So, the, co the common protocol class, sometimes we could not get the retrieve the parasite in one stool lang. So, the best is get three specimen. Yan. So, get three specimen in the span of 10 days. So, one specimen every other day sana or three 
co- three collected in 10 days. Yan. So, one specimen every other day or in a total of 10 days, yan, three, three specimens sana para talagang ma-retrieve yung specimen, yung parasite, um, suspected parasite natin, the sus. And for amibiasis, it's best if the patient is really suspected with amibiasis, we will get six specimens for the next um, two weeks. Yan, para ma-retrieve talaga natin. So next class, um, example, if the patient is taking some drugs, and we should take note. Yan. So because this this could make our specimen un, unsatisfa- un, unsatisfactory. So example are your antacids, kaolin, mineral oil, and other oily materials. Yan, because it could affect how we view our stool exam and non-absorbable I- anti-diarrheal preparations. So, if the patient is taking antibiotic or antimalarial, we should wait after two weeks before testing for parasite again. Kasi nga, minedicate mo na eh. Tingnan natin kung may makita pa tayo. So, after two weeks, and if there, uh, um, if the patient had gallbladder dice, we should wait for three weeks. Yan. So, if the patient had undergone um, barium or bismuth um, therapy, mineral oil. So, it should be delayed for 5 to 7 days. Yan. So, mag-wait tayo ng 1 week bago tayo mag-test ng stool exam if they have taken such um, um, medications or therapy. Yan. So, class. Nako. So, hindi ko na-animate ito ah. Okay. So, class for our specimen collection. So, it should be clean. Yeah, it's not necessarily sterile. Wide mouth containers with tight fitting lids. Yeah, syempre, I, we don't want spillage. So, class, we are the one who provide the specimen container. Okay. So, as much as possible, ganito kaliliit ang mga specimen container class. We don't accept stool um stool that are placed in peanut butter containers in mayonnaise containers in Nutella containers why because you know we don't know if they clean cleaned it well ganyan so we need to be choosy okay in what container so we are the one who actually provide for the container so class the size the volume of the stool that they need to submit is walnut size. Usually, yan, nasa book, walnut size. So, actually, parang walnut, magkalapit sila ng size ng almond. So, it's about 2 to 5 grams. Yan. So, ganun lang kakonte Plus, ang stool, hindi lahat. Okay? So, why? Hindi pa kaya tayo hindi nags- nagtatanggap ng sobrang raming stool because it's so difficult to dispose and it can be really expensive. So, walnut or thumb size. Yan, walnut or thumb size. So, in your manual, nakalagay actually doon 20 to 40 grams. Yan. Feeling ko, baka 2 to 4 grams lang yan. Okay? So, 2 to 5 na lang tayo, guys, according to Zaybig. Watery, pag-watery, about 5 to 6 tables, tablespoons. It should be in a Ziploc bag with the requisition form. Yan. Or wag nyo ilalagay sa loob kasi baka mas pilan yung request form. So, iwalay nyo, pero dapat kasama yung request form. Specimens need to be labeled completely on the body of the container. Yan. So, yung may stickers naman tayo. So, you could place the name and specifically the time class. Napakahalaga ng time. It should not be contaminated with water or urine. Yan. And what else? So, class, your, your stool, um, stool is very time sensitive. So, dapat within one hour after you have released the stool, dapat if it's form, kumatikas siya, it should be in the laboratory within one hour. And if it's watery class, it should be within 30 minutes so that we could preserve the trophozoids. So, trophozoids are the sexual form of the, um, the amoeba. Yan. So, class... So, ang mga trophozoids class, ano, nakikita lang sila at cyst. 
ano lang sila, under protozoa lang sila, yung mga unicellular na parasites natin. So, the trophozoites are described as your sexually active. Yan, they are capable of replication. They are capable of um, motility. And they are capable of feeding. So, class, pag maganda ang environment ng amoeba, they, they are in a trophozoite form. Yan. If the if the um, environment is favorable, yan, maganda yung, yung environment. But, class, if the environment becomes stressful, yan, and especially, specifically if the amoeba passes through the feces, it will, ano, it will um, undergo encystment. Yan, it will turn into cyst. Because cyst class are resistant and they are infective. Resistant meaning they can withstand unfavorable conditions. Yan. So class, so sabi, di ba, ang trophozoite dapat within 30 minutes, ang tae na within 30 minutes, nasa laboratory na para makahanap pa tayo ng trophozoite. Naman ang itsura ng mga trophozoite ng cyst. So unicellular lang tayo. So entamoeba histolytic. Yung mga mukhang amoeba talaga. Yan, yung cyst, yan, pabilog sila usually. Yan. So, they are, these ones are capable of moving, of reproducing. Sometimes, they are feeding. So, some, sure ka na na entamoeba histolytic ka kung may red blood cells inside the amoeba. Yan. So, class, pag formed yung stool, pag matigas yung stool, usually, there are more cysts compared to trophozoites. But as the stool becomes more watery, there are less cysts but more trophozoites. Yan. So, mas favorable environment ang, tropo, ang watery para sa mga trophozoites. Yan. Okay. So, class, um, we're almost in the end of our discussion. Fixatives for preservation na tayo. So, class, um, fresh stool should be examined, processed, or preserved immediately sana. Yan. However, class, if you cannot... Um, Ayun, class, refrigerated specimen may be used for antigen testing only. And if there are commercial collection kits, yan, there are commercial collection kits um, already present in collecting your stool, you could follow the instruction of the um, kit. So, ito, example, para pack. Yan, may buff, buffered neutral formalin na yung lalagyan. Yan, lalagyan mo na lang ng so, add specimen to this line. Yan. So, yun, palo mo lang. Ito naman, may zinc poly vinyl alcohol fixative na siya. Ayan, ito SAF. Ayan. So, if kits are not available, the specimen should be divided and stored into two different preservatives. Ayan. Yung isa, so, you have a stool um, sample. So, the... Divide it into two 10% formalin on one container and PVA on one container. So, get one part of the stool specimen and three volumes. So, in this formalin, so three volumes of formalin here, three vol volumes of PVA. Why? Because they are, these two, for, these two preservatives are complementary to each other. So, ang formalin class, pre-preserve niya ang mga helminths. Yan, yan yung specialty niya. Ang PVA naman, it preserves trophozoid. Yan. So, kung dalawa yung ginamit mong formalin, your uh, formalin preservative, you're getting ano, the best of both worlds. Di ba? Ang galing class. So, ensure that the specimen is mixed well with the preservatives. So, when it is a form stool, kailangan mong i-crush. I-mush. Yuck. Yan. Siyempre, kailangan mong ihalo talaga. Thoroughly yung fixative. Yan. So, we have 10% formalin. So, I told you that it's good in preserving helminth eggs, larvae, cysts. Yan. Pero kung trophozoid ang hanap mo, ang gamitin mo is PVA. Yan. So, class, yan. May advantages, disadvantages. Yan. I-screenshot nyo na lang, class. So, it's good. Marami advantages ang formalin. It's good for UV fluorescence microscopy, immunoassays, yan. AC acid fast staining, safranin stains, yan. Pero hindi pwede ang trichrome stain sa, stain sa formalin, pero pwede ang PVA. So, inadequate preservation of the protozoan trophozoid, it can interfere with PCR. So, class, hindi lang COVID 
ang PCR COVID-19. Anything which has DNA, RNA, pwedeng i-PCR. So we have PVA or specifically low viscosity polyvinyl alcohol. Class my source here is CDC. Yeah. So it's good for trophozoites and permanent smears. Yeah. And so kung, hinat, kung ginamit nyo yung formalin at saka PVA as a preservative na magkahiwalay, ah, hindi pinagkahalo, yeah. you're getting the best of both worlds. So we have MIF, methylate, my iodine formalin. So methylate class good for field surveys, yan pang maramihan. Suitable for concentration techniques. So concentration techniques is when we want to increase the sensitivity of our test. Yan. So I told you that sometimes, yan we could not. Um, retrieve a parasite in one stool specimen. Yeah. So perhaps we could increase the volume of the stool specimen, add formalin, ether, tapos centrifuge natin, and we could focus, ano, since yun nga, na-concentrate, yeah, we could focus the sediment under the microscope. So, it's not suitable for permanent smears. So, permanent smears, maganda PBA. Sabi niya, the iodine interferes with other stains. So, ang kahinaan niya yung iodine. Iodine may cause distortion of protozoa. Shodens, fixative. So it's good for protozoan trophozoid and cysts. So, parang PBA. And easy preparation for permanent stain smears. Yeah. So, however, class Shodens fixative contains mercury chloride, which is harmful for the environment and harmful for people. We have SAF, sodium acetate acetic acid formalin. Yan. So, long life, long shelf life. Bedding acid, fast safranine, chromotrope stains, immune assay. Okay. Okay rin siya sa permanent stain smears. However, it requires albumin and glycerin. Yan, for adhesion of specimens to slides. Yan, parang sa histopathology. Yan. So we have modified PVA, copper, or zinc. So permanent smear can be made since my PVA. Zinc, zinc is preferred. It has no mercury chloride. Yan. Staining is not consistent. And finally, class, we have one vial fixatives. Yung mga pinakita ko kanina. So, they could use for concentration techniques, permanent smear. Immune assays pwede. No mercury chloride. Certain one vial must be used for certain stains. There can be color difference in the stain and so on. And so, class, that's our discussion for today. Thank you for listening. Yeah, so, if you have any questions, just message. Just message me. Bye-bye, guys. Good night.